Hey YouTubers, welcome to my channel. Today I'm really excited. I'm going to be making some cabinets for my laundry room. We just moved into a new house and the laundry room is not organized at all. There are no cabinets. So I thought I'd give it a shot and just share with you the journey on how I put it all together. Okay, so this is the laundry room. It's kind of small and there's absolutely no storage. So I decided that I needed to build some cabinets to put in so that I would have a lot of room to keep things and put them away. Okay, my first step was to draw out my space where the cabinets were needing to be. After I drew out my space and decided how big I wanted my cabinets and what size cabinets, then I went ahead and drew a 4 by 8 sheet of plywood on the graph paper and started drawing out what cuts I needed to make. The first two cuts, the four, 4 feet by 3 feet times 2, I had the lumber yard cut them just because it's easier to for me to maneuver around the smaller sheets of plywood um, that rather than a whole four by eight sheet of plywood some things to consider when doing that make sure that the person that is cutting for you measures and then cuts and then measures again and cuts again because if they make both marks the width of the blade is going to take a little bit off of that second cut and you won't have pieces the same size. Another thing to keep in mind when cutting, if you go really fast, you end up chewing out your wood here. And that's what happened with the first cut that the guy at the, at the lumber yard, he went too fast. So the second cut, I asked him to slow down and look at the difference. That's a lot cleaner cut and it'll, it'll help with less work in the long run. Okay, I chose birch plywood because I wanted it to kind of match with what we have already in the kitchen. I just wanted it to have a seamless flow throughout the house. So this is kind of birch plywood. On the inside, it's a little bit lighter stained than the outside. So when I get to that point, I'll just use a lighter stain on the inside and finish it off so that it's sealed and stained. Okay, I knew that I wanted to make my cabinets 12 inches deep. So since there's four foot across the wood, I'm cutting at 11 and 3 quarter inches. If I cut it at 12 inches, that last one isn't going to be 12 inches because of the width of the blade. That's called the kerf. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is set up my fence. And by doing so, I lift this up. It allows this to slide back and forth. I'm going to move it to approximately where I want it to be, which is 11 and 3 quarter inches wide. And then I'm going to use my tape measure just to measure twice to cut once. Make sure that I got it at where I want it. So I can see it's just a little bit too wide. We'll go back, lock it down. This will make sure that every cut is exactly 11 and 3 quarters wide from the fence to this side of the blade. Right before I started cutting, I realized that my blade was kind of sitting this way. So before you start cutting, make sure that everything is set up exactly how you want it. It may even be a good idea to run a test run of a scrap piece of wood just to make sure you got everything where you dialed in where you want it. Once you do, start making your cuts. That's the fun part. Okay, safety first. Always, always, always goggles and ear protection. made the side cuts for my carcasses. Now I'm doing the tops and bottoms and the two shelves that are going to go in the tall cabinets. This particular saw, when it's opened all the way, will only go to just over 16 inches. I want them to be 18 inches. So I learned a little trick. If you lift these up and you notice there are two spots where you can put it right here and here if i move it and put it to the outside one that gains me a couple inches now I, when i'm doing this i want to make sure it's over the table so that it's sitting square and not cockeyed so let me back it up real quick and then tighten it back down then i can move it out to 18 inches so i'm going to go Set it up to 18 inches, 
bring this back so that it's right where I want it to be, verify that it's there, and lock it down. Then it's got this handy little arm that you just flip over, and it will the wood will sit on top of this handy little arm. Okay, since I'm making two cabinet carcasses, I need to make sure I keep track of which parts are going to be drilled in what places and where they're going to belong. So I'm just going to put one together at a time. Right now I'm doing the right side cabinet. So I do know that the outside of the right cabinet is going to be up against the right side wall. So if I drill my pocket holes in the outside of that piece, you're not going to be able to see it. When I put the face on, you won't see it because it'll be up against the wall. So that will be the right side of the right cabinet. Now when we get to the left side of the cabinet, of the right cabinet, that part's going to show. So I'm going to drill the holes on the inside of the cabinet and then fill them in with pocket hole plugs. Then they'll blend in and you won't be able to see them. Now when we get to the top and bottom, the bottom of the cabinet, I don't want it to show on the inside of the cabinet, so I'm going to drill my pocket holes on the underside. Now when I get to the, let me attempt to hold this together, when I get to the top of the cabinet, I'm going to drill my pocket holes on the, up, on the outside because then you won't be able to see them from the top. That's going to be up very close to the ceiling. I am going to have a fixed shelf in the middle of the cabinet that I'm going to drill the pocket holes on the underside and do, again fill them in with the pocket hole plugs. Okay, as I said, we're gonna, use, <clears throat> we're gonna use the Craig jig, and this is my favorite tool. My husband teases me about it all the time. He says, I love my Craig jig more than I love him. At times, he might be right. Anyway, setting up the Craig jig isn't that hard. You just kinda have to get used to how, how to do it. It's designed so that you can work with different thicknesses of wood, and still the hole will be in the right place to go right down at the right angle. So right now I'm setting up the drill bit. It's different than a regular drill bit. I don't know if you can see, it has like a little step. But this is, it's got a nice little um, markings already on here so that you can set it up to the depth that you need it set to. Okay, as just like with any cut, you wanna make sure that you have everything set up right. I'm just going to make sure I have everything set up right by using a scrap piece of wood. I have my vacuum set up so that it will catch most of the sawdust, making a lot less cleanup look for later. Okay, so this is the pocket hole that we just drilled. You would then put the screw in, put it up to your piece of wood that you're trying to drill it to, screw that in, that screw will hide all the way down in that hole. Then you can cover up the hole with this plug. Once you put the plug in place and it's all set, you won't see any seam at all. Okay, now that we've done a test run and we know we have our tools set up exactly how we want it, um, to mark where I was drilling, I know that I want some pocket holes at each end, and then on the longer runs, I want pocket holes at each end and in the center. Okay, now that we've drilled all the holes, it's time for sanding. As you noticed before, I had, I had marked it all up, labeled each piece of wood. It's okay because now we're just gonna sand it off. When you purchase cabinet grade plywood, it's very close to being ready. You just need to do a little bit of sanding, so that's what we're gonna do now. After I sand each piece as I go along, I'm going to relabel it on a piece of painter's tape, put that painter's tape back on that piece so I don't get my pieces confused and put something together wrong. Okay, next step is assembly. So all the supplies that we need are the wood that we've already cut, that's already labeled. As you remember, we labeled it, or I label it, just so that I have every piece I know what goes to the front of the cabinet, what goes up, what's on the outside, inside. That leaves a lot less mistakes and headaches later. We have our drill motor with our pocket hole bit. 
are pocket hole screws. You can use any screw, but I like these specific Craig pocket hole screws because they have a wider head and it really just grabs those pieces and pulls them together tight. And we have clamps to hold everything together while you're screwing it and an extra pair of hands just in case. As with any assembly job, preparation is key. So I have my pieces laid out exactly how I want them. I have my clamps pretty close to the adjustment that I need. They're pre-adjusted. I have any other supplies I might need right within reach, easy to grab. So let's get this thing put together. I've drawn some lines on the bottom of the cabinet so that I know where I want that bottom shelf to be just because I want them to match what the ones that are already in the kitchen are and that's how they were put together. So I'll be putting the center shelf in after I screw the top and bottom together just because it's easy. Easy for me to put that shelf in the middle later. I gave that three quarter inch at the bottom, but the top I want flush because I want it all the way up at the ceiling to give as much room inside the cabinet as I can. So to make sure that it's lined up correctly, I just kind of knock it a little bit if I need to loosen the clamp a little, just to give it a little more wiggle room. And I line that top, the side piece and the top piece right up against that clamp and then tighten it back down that way. I know it's right where I want it to be. Now that I've got the top part screwed together, now I'm just going to make sure that that line that I drew, that I'm all lined up right where I need to be. I'm going to clamp, clamp that bottom just to give me some extra support so pieces of wood don't move around. Notice I moved it up a little bit, that way I can get to the pocket holes easily. If you notice I'm just screwing and I didn't apply any glue, um, it's kind of a personal preference. I feel like I'm using enough pocket holes that I don't absolutely need to glue. The, the job of the cabinet is just going to be holding towels and miscellaneous items, so it's not the weight of it is not going to be such that I need that added glue for strength. Okay, for this portion of the assembly, I've turned my cabinet upside down just so that I can reach that center shelf where the pocket holes are. I know that I wanted 16 inches between the top of my shelf and the in top inside of the cabinet. So I took a scrap piece of wood, I have it in there, it's already 16 inches right where I want it, and I'm just resting the shelf on it. That way, I know that the shelf is not going to move around while I'm trying to screw it in. I flipped my cabinet around. I'm re repeating the same process on the other side. I like to do one at each end first, then do the center ones. That way it doesn't end up wonky. Okay, this is what a standard pocket hole plug looks like. And when I tried to apply it to my holes, they stuck out quite a bit because when I drilled my holes, I might have had that adjustment off just a little bit so it didn't quite go deep enough. The screw is still in the, in the wood, great, but if I leave it like this, there's a lot of sanding I'm going to have to do. So rather than do that, I just went out to the bandsaw and chopped it off a little bit, or a lot. <laughs> so I chopped off a good half inch, and now it'll plug right into that hole just about perfect. Okay, because these pocket hole plugs are sticking out quite a bit, we went ahead and picked up a little dovetail saw um, to knock those down so that there would be a lot less sanding. Works pretty good. We just kind of go in and saw back and forth. The next step is to sand down these plugs to make them flush with the wood. I'm going to get all geared up and get to it. As you can see, now they're much more flush with the wood. They blend in pretty nice. 
Okay, the next step is to attach the cleats to the inside of the cabinet. We're attaching it to the very top of the cabinet on the inside and just below the shelf on the inside. If you cut your cleats at the same time as you cut your bottom, top, and, and shelves, then they'll all be the same size. I forgot to do that at that time, so this one's just a little bit loose. So I'm going to go ahead and screw and glue this one. And again, we're using pocket hole screws because, you know, pocket hole screws. Okay, as you can see now we have the cleats in and there's one right under here. I don't know if you can see it, but that's what we're going to use to attach to the walls. One thing I didn't mention earlier, if I'm just painting a cabinet, it doesn't matter so much. But as you can see right through here, you can see the layers of the plywood. So. I don't want that to show, and that's where edge banding comes in. I'm going to cut a piece to go right across this center shelf, and you iron it on with a regular iron. I don't need it at the top or the bottom or on the sides because the faceplate's going to cover that, but it's not going to cover on the shelf, so I need to make sure that I do something just to make it look pretty since this particular cabinet I'm staining. Okay, to apply edge banding, first you want to make sure that you have a squared edge. When I, get, when I get to the end of a piece of wood, I usually just rip it. So I just cut it. It cuts with scissors really easy. You start at one end, and it is a little wider than the shelf, but we're going to go back and sand that off when, we're, when it's on and applied. I just start with a regular iron, and I just have it on the hottest setting and I'm just gonna put it on there and move along slowly just to kind of tack it down. Do not use your best iron. You don't wanna get in trouble with the spouse. So this first pass, I'm just tacking it down so that then I can go back and trim it. So I'm not really concerned with it staying that well and I'm just gonna use an X-Acto knife to trim it off right where I want it. And then I'm going to go back and do it again. And as I go along, I'm going to push the wood behind me with a nice piece of Purple Heart, <laughs> my favorite wood. I'm just going to go along after the iron passes by just to push it down and hold it tight. Okay, so here's that edge banding complete. Looks a lot better than this. Um, came out really nice and now it'll stain just like the rest of the wood and it'll blend right in. You, nobody will ever know that it's there. Okay, now it's time to build the cabinet faces. I'm using butt joints because I wanted to match the same as the, ke the kitchen cabinets and those are made with butt joints. So we've cut our pieces to size and I'm just using attaching with pocket hole screws. Now that we have the faces together, the last step is to attach the face to the cabinet. So we're just going to do that using the pocket holes that we had already drilled when we built the cabinet. Using this nice big clamp to hold everything flush and in place so nothing walks away while I'm trying to put the screws in. Okay, now that the two side cabinets are done, we're going to build out the center cabinet. We're going to use the same process, but it's going to be shorter. Okay, handy tip. When the table starts to get so that the wood doesn't want to slide easily on it, I take some wax paper and just kind of polish the table. It helps the wood just start sliding a lot easier. And it lasts for a pretty long time. I haven't done this in a while, so I got you for it. Now, I have three pieces, the top and bottom of the center shelf and the cleat that's going to go along the back, they all need to be the same dimension at 27 and a half for this particular project. So 
I taped them together when I, I butted one end up against a flat surface so that they would be all exactly the same. Taped them together and then I marked where I needed to cut. I put tape on each side of the cut and then one piece of tape at each end of the project pieces to hold them together. And then because my fence doesn't go to 27 and a half, I have to kind of freehand it and um, slide it through that way. That's why I primed my tabletop to make sure it slides straight and it doesn't end up going wonky on me. for my laundry room. As you can see, they aren't quite finished yet. We still need to stain them, attach the backs, build doors, add a faceplate to the center cabinet, and hang them. All that's going to be covered on the second video, so stay tuned for that. If you enjoyed watching and following along, please give me a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. We'll see you next time on the TaylorMade Workshop.